Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be building this tree on the Xtool D1 Pro. I'm also going to show you this that allows you to work in your shop, get rid of the smoke, and not have to wear your safety glasses all the time. Stick around, let's get started. If we look at this a little bit closer, uh, you can see that it is, uh, consists of four layers. Uh, each layer has a different pattern. So anyway, so this is all made from two pieces of, uh, this is a 12 by 12, three millimeter uh, Baltic birch plywood. Uh, also, this is not my design. This is something I bought off of Etsy. If you're interested in making that, I'll leave it down in the description, uh, a link to that. So anyway, so uh, I got this off of Amazon. Again, I'll leave a link. So what we gotta do is we need to mask this piece off. Alrighty, as we're getting this mounted up, I just want to explain what we've got going here. So this is just a cabinet. So this is my uh, new CNC that I'm currently building. It's a work in progress. Um, so this is just a drawer. It's got, uh, I think it's a little overkill, but I think there are 300 pound drawer slides. Everything I talk about, I'll put down in the description. Um, so it folds out, this lifts up. This here is OD3 um, glass or a plastic that's laser safe um, rated for the frequency that my laser is at. So what that does is allow me to use this machine while I'm in the shop, maybe doing something else. I can just set this up, let it go. I can be busy with other things. And then what we have here for the smoke is, is this comes off so that when I'm not using it, I slide it all back in and I just put a false front on here, but it's held in by some rare earth magnets. Um, this goes to a, let me see if I can bring it up here, uh, an inline duct fan. And then I just have the other end going out the garage. It works great of uh, getting the smoke out of here. There's no smoke filling in the shop, so it works perfectly. So this has been a really great setup. Still a work in progress, but it does really, really good. So I want to bring you in a little bit closer because one of the great things with the X-Tool D1 is it, got, it has removable legs. But I made this so tight that it's hard to get those legs on and off. So what I did is I designed up these 3D printed legs and I've got a whole system in here where I can raise and lower this depending on what I'm working on. If I'm uh, putting my maker's mark in the bottom of a bowl, um, I can lower it all the way. That way it gives me about four inches that I can get to. But if I'm doing something like uh, plywood or whatever, I've got the legs in there and it holds this honeycomb up. The other thing that I've got is I 3D printed these and I'll put links to all of, well, these pegs, I designed those. If you want those, drop a comment and I can send you the files. But these little pegs go into the honeycomb and hold down the wood. And the reason is, is because this wood isn't always super flat. It likes to bow on you, especially as you're cutting and it warms it up. So all I do is go in and put these down and the laser height is already set up because I've been doing a couple of these uh, different projects. So I just put these little pins in and then what I'll do is I'll put it on the edge. Let me see if I can get it in closer for you. I'll put it on the edge and then run the carriage down and then just move the honeycomb around until I get it so that it's running parallel. And I know that's good. So then I've got my center mark here. So I just move this to where it is over the center spot. And then let me take you over to the computer and show you what we're gonna cut. Alrighty, here's what our design looks like. Uh, so it's the different layers. So the, this is going to be the top. Um, I believe this is the second layer, third layer. I've printed the fourth layer. Um, the settings that I've got here, you can see, um, this is again all been calibrated because I did that um, that uh, material test tool. If you will go and look at one of my videos, I'll put a link up in the top to where you can go and see how I did that. 
Alrighty, so I've got the fan running, the duct is going out of the garage door. Uh, so I'm just going to close this to make sure that again we are getting all the smoke out and make sure that this laser glass is uh, or plastic is going to protect our eyes. I'm going to turn on air assist and I'm going to hit start. This is kind of one of my favorite things to do, is just, just to see how well it comes out. So just remove my little clips, and then you pick it up, and boom, everything just comes out nice and smooth, and leaves everything behind. I just, I don't know, I think that's so cool. All righty, let's get these over to the workbench. So what we've got to do is we've got to take off the masking only on the stars. So I like to just use a little razor blade to, because my big sausage fingers can't get underneath and grab it. I'm just gonna peel them all off. And see that score line that we did on it? It just leaves, uh, you know, just takes off the, the thing from the uh, star, the snowflake, and leaves it there so that we don't get paint on them. Now you can use spray paint. I did on the first one that I did and I didn't like it because I got you know spray paint on the sides and everything. So I'm going to try something different. I went in and grabbed some semi-gloss um, paint from my model station. So I haven't done it in a long time but I used to make model cars and planes so I had some of that paint, so just going to use that. I did a test off camera and I think it's gonna work out great. Just got a little model paint there. Alrighty, I'm going to let that dry up and I'm going to go clean, uh, let's get that lid cleaned off. I'm going to go clean up the brush, grab some lunch and then uh, I'll be back. Alright, so now that we've got the white paint dried, now it's time to take the rest of the masking off. Alrighty, so what we want to do now is uh, stain these just to get a little bit of color difference. Um, the person that posted this on Etsy used um, different colors of uh, wood, like a cedar and, and different shades of wood. Um, but this is what I had on hand, so I wanted to go with it. So not a big problem. Just going to use a couple of different colors of stain. And what it's going to be is all we're going to do is we're going to stain this one color. And it'll be the same color as these. And then the two little deer, we will stain them uh, a lighter color is what I'm shooting for. Um, it's okay if you get a little bit down in here, because as if you remember, it's all going to be covered up by the, the various layers. So it's going to go like, you know, something like that. If I can turn it around and show you. So you can see that it's all going to be covered up. So it's, it's okay. Okay, so I'm just going to put a light coat on and then wipe it off because I just, I just want a hint of the color. Okay, those are the two deer. 
Set that aside, let it dry. And hopefully there's enough contrast between the two. I think there is. Maybe I'll put another coat on this one just to make, make sure it pops and it's a different color. Again, you can do whatever you know you want. You maybe maybe don't use stain, maybe you use you know just paint or whatever. It's really up to you, kind of what you want to do with it. But hopefully, this will give you you know some inspiration on kind of how to do yours if you choose to do this. This is just stain I had on, on hand from, you know, various projects that I've done around the house. Okay. Alrighty, time to glue it up. So I'm just using some Starbond Medium. Check down in the uh, description for um, some, uh, a link for some 15% off. Uh, so just going to use just enough to kind of hold it. That's the I'm not going to use any activator on this because I need that extra time to make sure I get it all aligned up. So I'm going with the first two layers. Put it on its side. Make sure this is all aligned. I'm just going to use some clamps here. And so th since these sides are a little thin, you just have to, you know, kind of maneuver them into place before you put the clamp on. Okay, that looks good. Just going to add a few more. Okay, going to leave that for a minute. Alrighty, so now we just need to uh, glue this in. I did glue the base together off camera. So I'm just gonna put our glue here. And it's a little bigger than it should be, but I think I'm just gonna throw some of these clamps on it to kind of stabilize it while it dries. Next, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of uh, clear um, lacquer, satin. I am going to put um, probably four coats of this. I'm gonna leave it for 30 minutes in between each coat. And then once I'm done, I'll come back and uh, we'll talk about it. Alrighty, that's gonna wrap it up for today. I think this turned out really great. Uh, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And here's just a couple of the other things that I've made for holiday, holiday, <laughs> holiday decorations. Um, you know, these are great little gifts. I've made little ornaments and things like that and personalized them with people's names on them. I don't have any of those because I gave them all away. Um, so this is a great thing. Uh, hopefully you picked up some of the tips and tricks along the way. Also, this is something that I built, but they do make them so that you can add an enclosure to your, your laser engraver. I recommend getting something because what it allows you to do is it allows you to work while you're in the shop, while this is running, doing other things without worrying about the laser messing with your eyes because of the safety glass, um, having the smoke uh, being ventilated out somewhere. All of those are great things, but hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it that thumbs up, drop a comment. Uh, all of those things uh, help the channel out. And until next time, I wish you and your family a blessed day. Thank you.